A new book paints a dismal picture of America. It suggests President Trump is the symptom of what's wrong and not the disease. It's called America, the Farewell Tour. Joining me now, author Chris Hedges, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and also host of On Contact, a show on Russian TV and network funded by the Russian government. Chris, thanks for your time. Let's start with his, with this, uh, you know, your, your provocative claims here, including that the country is facing the inevitable collapse of the American empire. So how do you back that up and what do you mean by that? Well, first of all, we've extended ourselves militarily uh, 17 years now of warfare uh, into conflicts that are futile, that we're not going to win, uh, exhausting trillions of dollars while the country is being hollowed out from the inside, not only in terms of deindustrialization but austerity and the orchestration of the largest wealth inequality in American history. And you can't maintain a democracy in an oligarchic system, and that goes all the way back to philosophers such as Aristotle. Uh, and the book focuses on the kinds of pathologies that are exhibited by a society in deep decay. Uh, the opioid crisis, gambling, uh, sexual sadism, suicide, uh, which are plaguing larger and larger segments of the country and I think have political consequences. Mm. This kind of stagnation, as you pointed out, creates figures like Trump. And I covered the war in the former Yugoslavia. I was the Balkan bureau chief for the New York Times. And I watched the economic collapse of Yugoslavia vomit up figures like Radovan Karadzic and Slobodan Milosevic. So we have to address uh, this social inequality, this, this dislocation, this alienation, what Durkheim, the sociologist, calls this anomie. Uh, or our problems are not going to go away, even with the impeachment of Trump. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more when it comes to the political ramifications and it too, Chris, because at a larger scope, yes, this is uh, what you're touching on in your book. But here, in this where we're talking about, uh, you know, the John McCain funeral, the words coming out of it, President Trump in here too, racism that's happening uh, in Florida when it comes to the governor's race there and that tone in this day nation, basically when it comes to the past week, um, it, it, talk about the political ramifications of it in that sense. Well, you saw with the McCain funeral really at its core an appeal for civility, uh, for a return to uh, a political discourse uh, grounded in mutual respect. And uh, of course, this is what's happened. This is what demagogues. This is how demagogues speak. They speak in, in vulgarities, uh, the way Trump does. Uh, they belittle others, and particularly the vulnerable, the weak. Uh, they uh, are consumed by this kind of narcissism. Everything in the world is seen through the lens of what's either good for them or what isn't good for them. Who is loyal to them and who isn't. Uh, and I found that kind of poignant with the McCain funeral mm -hmm. uh, because this is the new world. Uh, and as you correctly point out, it's not limited to Trump. Uh, there are all sorts of Trump uh, mini-me's uh, in Florida and everywhere else uh, who have descended into this kind of gutter talk uh, and, yeah. uh, and, and appeals to yeah. uh, racism and Islamophobia and homophobia. Uh, and it's not just the United States. This is what neoliberalism has writ large, what corporate capitalism has writ large throughout much of the industrialized world. We just saw in a German city 8,000 uh, uh, marchers led by neo-Nazis uh, walking through the streets. We've seen Hungary with Orban, uh, Brexit. Uh, the rise of Boris Johnson, figures well, like Boris Johnson. So it's not limited to the United States. Sure. And if you take history, though, in, in essence, history of this country, and you look at its past, and you look at the darker moments, and you look at the challenges, civil unrest uh, in the 60s, Vietnam War, and we can go on a list here, um, we've seen it through. We've come out of it. And who's not to say that that couldn't be the same when it comes to this time now? It, why it seems like if you see it as bleak, are we going to stay bleak? Well, because the foundation of the American economy is no longer manufacturing. Uh, it, it, our economy has been seized by uh, Wall Street speculators. So you think econ the economy is be behind it all? Yeah, sure. I mean, there was an article in today's New York Times about uh, the fracking industry being the next bubble. Well, we've got student right. debt. We've got the economy is extremely weak. Uh, and you saw with the tax cuts, uh, these major corporations went and bought back their own stock. 
uh, so because their compensation packages are tied to stock or they hoarded it. They didn't invest it into the country. They didn't create jobs. Uh, and this is what Karl Marx calls fictitious capital. And, and we all know where it's going to end. Uh, and another economic crisis, okay. there's no plan B. They're, they can't lower interest rates any more right. than they've already lowered them. Chris Hedges, thank you for your time and perspective. Now to the Florida's government.